Today, we're going to talk about secure containers and give you a demo of what this new community service can do for the entire bioinformatics community. Whether you're using the cloud or not, whether you're using Nextflow or not, this matters. This launched last week at the Nextflow Summit in Boston, and we think it's going to be a big deal for everyone. Now, the AWS batch team here in HPC Engineering have learned a lot from working with the Nextflow community over many years. We've especially learned to get behind the genius ideas they come up with and figure out how we can help make them a reality. This is one of those times. There's a reason we're all here. <laughs> it's a special set of skills. So this is like a support group, isn't it, really? <laughs> anyway, this community container project will remove a giant pain in the but for people who just want to run their pipelines without faffing about on the details of how to build containers or being stuck with the ones that are on offer that may just not work for them. It'll also enable the widespread use of alternative architectures. In the near term, that means containers based on Bioconda and PyPI in ARM64 format. This is awesome news for portability and for reproducibility too. <laughs> I'm a very paranoid bioinformatician. I take uh, reproducibility very, very seriously. And, and a lot of the work I do is with these the community pipelines from NF Core, um, this kind of lovely bioinformatics community we've built around about collaborating on pipelines. And those, those images are being used thousands of times all the time. So you don't want to be messing around there. You want it to be built and, and stored. <laughs> Wave will build the image for the first time, um, and then it will return it to you immediately. But async in the background, it will also push that to a, a Docker registry. And then if someone else requests the same image again, it will just fetch it from a registry. So it only ever does the build that one time. Yeah, so I'm really excited about this. Uh, working on bioinformatics, we do all this work with containers, with software packages, and um, it's kind of really changed the way we've worked in, bio, in bioinformatics over the past few years. When I started, we had to install everything manually, um, then kind of got into environment modules on clusters, and then Conda was a big thing. But now really everyone is using Docker or Singularity. And, and it works brilliantly. We've got these really good bioinformatics packaging solutions like uh, Conda and Bioconda, a lot of stuff on, on the Python package index. Um, and it's not too bad to go from that into a, into a Docker image, but it's kind of that layer of friction that we're trying to eliminate. Bioinformatics communities really embrace containers. Yeah. That's been a game changer, right? It really has. Some, some of the analysis pipelines we're typically running might have anywhere from kind of 10 to even kind of 50 upwards different tools written by different groups in different languages, different parts of the world, each of them with kind of different installation methods. When I started uh, working in bioinformatics, it would take you days and days to sit down and get all of these to, to install. <laughs> and even then, you know, they would kind of sporadically crash. Um, so, but now, I mean, we're building pipelines, we're writing code and software, which, which kind of says, okay, use these, these Docker images, which are already ready for you. They're fetched on demand and you just don't think about it anymore. You just, you don't think about the components of the analysis pipeline anymore. You just run your analysis and they're all fetched and they just work. And also they're really reproducible because, um, you know, you've got a stack of de dependencies underneath any installation. But if you run that installation once and kind of save it basically in, a, in an image in a container, then it's the same for every person who runs it on every machine, which is much, much better in terms of reproducibility. Right. But, but there's still a pain in the ass factor about using containers, right? Yeah. You still have to still actually production. build the thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, drum roll, enter drum secure roll. containers. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, secure containers is um, kind of this web interface you can go to th through the secure website. You kind of pop onto to containers here, and um, you can type in uh, any package name that you're interested in. So, uh, at the moment, it works with anything from the Python package index, so PyPI, um, and anything from Conda. It can be any Conda channel. By default, we just show Conda Forge and Bioconda because for most people using this, those are the two channels which are the most important. But anyway, so then I, I kind of tap in, I don't know, I want to do some, align some DNA sequences using BWA. I can search BWA um, oh. and here we go on a Bioconda, I've got the BWA package. I add that in and then I click uh, get container. And um, straight away, I've got my uh, my kind of Docker URI there that I can copy in and throw straight into um, whatever analysis I'm doing. Phil also wanted me to mention that every container gets inspected by Trivi because security is job zero. And every container also gets a full bill of materials for every build. 
So, so far, this is pretty similar to kind of a typical Docker registry. Um, there are, there's already kind of biocontainers and other projects which pre-build um, packages such as all the Bioconda packages. And so there, there are containers you can pick up and go run with. But what's a bit different here is that these these, are, these images in secure containers are being built kind of um, on demand, basically. So what I can do, which is really kind of a bit of a game changer, is very often you want to use multiple Bioconda packages in, in kind of together. So maybe I want to take the outputs from BWA and pipe those into samples. So um, I can I can tap in SAM tools here, search for that, and um, add that in as a second piece of software into the container. So now I've got BWA and SAM tools. That's the really key thing. I don't have to think about whether the image exists anymore. I just build whatever I want. I want to add Picard, search for Picard, throw that in, get container. So that's quite literally that has created the container on the fly. That happened faster than anybody could reasonably compile any of that stuff. So pretty clearly we've got cache binaries of these of these previously compiled things in there because we've probably compiled them for somebody else before and we're giving somebody a, con a container address like more or less instantly yeah but and what's nice is that we're not dependent on that container cache it doesn't have to exist already so i'm always biased i use my, my tool multi qc as an example for everything now mm -hmm. i haven't built an image with this combination of packages before so if i click get container this time it's not going to be instant because this time I've requested something that's not in the cache and it's going to go off and it's going to build it. However, because the Docker URI is based on um, a hash of the, uh, the Conda environment and the, and the Docker file, I can start using the Docker URI immediately. And also Wave, which is powering all of this in the back end, is clever about this. So I could even run Docker pull on this right now and the command would work, but it would just sit there and wait in the terminal until the build is finished and, and then, then immediately start downloading it. That is, that is absolutely genius. So it, it might take, what, three or four minutes to build this container, but it doesn't slow me down at all because I can already start pulling into my code and start using it immediately. You could actually be pulling things from PyPy as well as Bioconda, as yep. well as Conda Forge. They could be coming from three or three different sources. You could end up with a with a container that's truly mulled between yep. different distributions, right? Yeah. So I mean, we we cheat slightly with this because we basically at the moment use Conda to pull the PyPI packages. So if I add in fast API here and it's coming from pip um, and then add in, I don't know, multi-QC. Multi-QC again, such a good package. <laughs> such a good package <laughs> off, uh, off by under. And then I'll hit get container now. I haven't done this before, so this is going to take a couple of minutes to build. But when we see the, the build details, if I go to, to ones I've built previously, I can click on details and you can see there is the environment file. This is the Docker file that was used to build from that. And then I've got the full build logs as well. So I can see exactly went into what went into everything. So now a key thing, when do these, when do these URLs expire? Never. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's the correct answer. <laughs> so that, I mean, that's, that's a real, that's kind of uh, the origin of this whole project really for me. The, the tool that sits underneath this that powers the whole thing is called Wave, uh, which is a piece of open source software by, by us at Sekiro. And that does all the building on demand. It's been around since last year. Um, but yep. usually when you use it, it just kind of gives you a, basically a temporary image. It builds it and then it caches it for about 72 hours. Uh, and then it's kind of wipes, and the next time you ask for it, it's built again, and that's fine for most cases. But um, but I'm very paranoid. <laughs> I'm a very paranoid bind mathematician. I take uh, reproducibility very very seriously, and and a lot of the work I do is with these the community pipelines from NF Core, um, this kind of lovely bioinformatics community we've built around about collaborating on pipelines, and those those images are being used thousands of times all the time. So you don't want to be messing around there you want it to be built and, and stored and so what we do here is actually wave will build the image of the first time um, and then it will return it to you immediately but async in the background it will also push that to a, a docker registry and then if someone else requests the same image again it will just fetch it from a registry so it only ever does the build that one time and, and so these things will hang around long term. They'll be there so that this is some, you know, part of the goal here is to support reproducibility. I mean, that's seriously important. Um, yeah. But we just want things to work as much as anything else. We just want things to work. Now, um, this is only available to people who use the cloud, right? 
No, <laughs> no, not at all. So, I mean, it's powered by AWS. We, we've put your load out down there because, like you say, we're working together, and 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 all the infrastructure is is being hosted there. But don't be don't be fooled, <laughs> because this uh, this Docker pull command will work for anyone, anywhere. There's um, no authentication required. Uh, it's got very high uh, pull limits because we know that's that's how it works with Nextflow. Like I say, if you run a pipeline, you might want to pull 50 or 60 containers within a, f a few seconds. So that will work. So this is going to be a super high performance, super efficient uh, um, container registry for bioinformatics containers that people can use long term, anytime they like. And it's more or less real time, close to real time response. Yep. Uh, to build your containers on demand when you need them. Yeah, and if anyone's listening who's using HPC and they're like, okay, well, it might might work, but I don't want to have Docker installed on my HPC system, then we've got you covered as well because we also support builds for Singularity. Um, and this is doing, if I select this, it will do a native build on the back end using a Singularity container spec file. So it, it's, then it's a proper OCI compliant container for Singularity natively built and I can even get a, uh, a URL returned, which allows me just to download that that SIF file directly without having Singularity installed or anything. So Now, the other thing there, the, just to the right of that is another button, another pull-down menu, which is interesting to us, right? You mm. and I started talking, like you and I and Paolo started talking about this a couple of years ago in the context of how can we enable the bioinformatics community to use ARM processors, you know, these are low carbon, low power consumption, high performance CPUs that are really cool. You really do need to make it easy for folks to be able to just adopt a CPU. I guess just we, that one little bit of extra friction is we needed to work out how to get containers available. So what's the, what's the availability of ARM containers, ARM64 containers here? How soon are, are they going to be available and what's sort of the, what's the state of play? Yeah. So... Um, firstly, the the back end here is able to build on on different um, systems, so we can we can build on AMD or, or on ARM. Nice. Pretty much everything on on the Python package index will work today uh, yeah. on both systems. Um, Bioconda is slightly different because Conda works with kind of pre built binaries, um, which sit on the on the Anaconda um, cloud. So when you pull that, it they have to exist already. And until pretty recently, that was only um, AMD. There was no ARM support at all in Bioconda, but the the Bioconda support um, community, which is a fantastic com community, really big, mm -hmm. full of very enthusiastic um, uh, folks working in bioinformatics, has been a huge effort the past kind of year or so really to build up their infrastructure to support um, ARM builds, and that's really come actually into production. Kind of, it's all been merged the last few months. It's very very recent. And so we're starting to see now a few of the first packages coming out, which um, which do actually support ARM, which is really exciting to see. Yeah, this is a big deal. So you know, the 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 dream that I've got is that because of this project, they'll be able to switch the CPU architecture they're using. Is they don't have to change their workflows because their pipelines, their pipelines are written in a in a layer of abstraction, which is Nextflow typically. The only thing they're going to have to change is is a couple of calls. It's even better than that, actually. So when you're using a Nextflow pipeline, you, this 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 web interface I'm showing you here is is kind of a point and click interface for anyone to try it out and get started and just fetch an image without any any kind of lead time. You know, anyone can jump in. Doesn't matter what software tool you're using, what workflow manager, what you're doing. You can you can use this. Um, but if you're using Nextflow, then Nextflow has built-in support for Wave, the backend here. Mm -hmm. um, and and also for security containers. So if you hop into your Nextflow config file, you can just say wave enabled, enable wave in your Nextflow config. And if you, you don't need any authentication to use this, right. um, you, you just say um, freeze, which is telling it basically to push the images to the public container registry. And then you just use the Conda packages. So you tell wave, okay, use the Conda packages, which I specify in my pipeline. Um, and then it, your pipe Nextflow will ask the registry um, here, so secure containers, I've got these Conda packages, can you give me a Docker image? And it will return that Docker image. And better, better, than, better than that, um, it will say, I'm running on this kind of infrastructure. So, um, and it will return the correct type of image. That's, so, <laughs> that you know, is you, genius. You, you have one Nextflow pipeline, you just specify which packages you want in it, and everything else is fully automatic and it should work on any system. Yeah. And what I, what I love about it as well is, I mean, I'm a 
pipeline developer, like I say, in the community, I'm working on these pipelines, which are shared by many people. And, and one of the strengths of Nextflow is being able to share workflow analyses across different infrastructures, different people. I can give it to another scientist on the other side of the world running, you know, it doesn't matter, HPC or cloud, just Docker singularity. Uh, and what's nice here is I can just write the Conda packages and it, they can, it will work now out of the box with Conda itself with Docker, with Singularity, with AMD, with like you get this huge matrix of different kind of computational infrastructure that the person could be running on. But as a pipeline developer, I don't care. I just put the Conda packages and it works everywhere. So uh, one other thing, we've got the, the web interface that we saw, which is kind of really nice and kind of point and click and easy to use. We've got the NextFlow integration, which is the best way to do it if you're using NextFlow. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, all by mathematicians, there's kind of a bit of a running joke about uh, not not necessarily needing a graphical user interface at GUI. You know, we, we love to work on the terminal. Um, so we've got a command line tool as well, which is just called Wave. You can install it. I'm on Mac, so I do brew. I can install it through Homebrew. Um, and it's a, you know, a command line tool, and it does all the same stuff. Right? This is all based off, a, off an API backend, um, and the command line just kind of makes it easy to work with that. Um, and so this is this is great. I mean, I can do this really quickly. I can do wave uh, conda package. There you go. This is the same um, same example I did a second ago in the web. I can say uh, BWA, um, and I can say freeze, and it will go off and it will fetch that image for me and just return the URI for URI for the container straight away. And I what can... does the freeze option mean in this in this case? Right. So that's the kind of a, the technical term that we've given. Uh, t for wave where we say build the image and return it straight away but also push it to a, a kind of a, a, repo a docker registry for long-term storage now normally when you do freeze you would say uh, you give minus minus build repository and you say use my i don't know docker hub or key.io or um, ecr whatever you know i have my own private registry and it's over there and i want you to build this image and store it there um, and then Wave can handle all the authentication that we do through Secure Platform. So you keep all your credentials there and Wave will push and pull um, and kind of act as a proxy, um, basically, for that custom registry. But if you specify minus minus freeze and you've only done public uh, images, packages, sorry, so you haven't used your own Docker file, then that will just go to the community registry. Possibility of using SPAC in here as well, right? So we can we can do exactly the same trick for SPAC. We can set up a, a SPAC kind of um, you know specification and then run the SPAC install within a Docker file within a Docker image and return that. Um, so we Wave already has some support for SPAC and, and we're hoping to bring that to to secure containers as well to, for this kind of public registry um, pretty soon. Great. So there's there's two big things for customers to look out for on this thing. There's this angle, which is one is just Keep an eye out for SPAC coming. Keep an eye out for even further growth in the ARM64 support. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be able to, you know, run these containers on your laptop, on your Mac if you've got one uh, with Apple Silicon or run it on a Graviton instance in the cloud or run it on a, you know, potentially run it on a Grace, a Grace CPU on a, you know, on an on-prem cluster that, that's got some NVIDIA Silicon uh, in it. It's to see, see people trying this out and, you know, go and go and break it and <laughs> and throw everything you have at it and see see if it can handle things. And send all the bug reports back to Phil. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>